Today we're gonna make pumpkin herb dinner rolls. It's a soft, buttery, savory pumpkin roll that's yeasted and then we've actually bloomed all of those herbs in brown butter to like awaken their flavors and then put all of that deliciousness in the roll. And so you just get this impactful flavor that is just absolutely magnificent. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. Let's get into it. So the first step of these rolls is to make our sponge. Now, um, a sponge is a beautiful thing because it starts to not only hydrate your yeast, but it also starts the kind of gluten formation process. The yeast are getting all happy and excited and bubbly and ready to do their jobs. And then the gluten in the flour is getting, you know, it's starting that forming to form that network. And it's just, it's gonna make the whole mixing process a lot faster and the whole thing a lot quicker, which obviously we want rolls like ASAP. So first step, sponge. I've got my bread flour here. Um, in this recipe, I do use bread flour as opposed to AP because of the mix-ins and there's a lot of uh, pumpkin puree, which, you know, obviously inhibits the gluten formation. So you wanna make sure that you kind of start with something where you can, you know, you're giving it the tools it needs to, to create the structure. And then we've got our dry active yeast, a little bit of sugar, and then this is milk. It feels just a little warmer than body temperature, which means it's probably around 100 degrees. Uh, which is exciting and exactly where we want it. If it feels like really hot to the touch, it is too hot for the yeast. Do not, just let it cool a little bit before you use it. Now we are gonna get in there with our hands. Yes, the easiest way to mix this is with your hands because it's so loose that it can, it just, it's, it's actually quite difficult to mix with a spoon. You can, but I like to use kind of like a claw as almost your kind of a multi-pronged stirring device attached to your body. Now you're not gonna get all of those lumps out and that's okay. You can let them chill in there. They will they will not be there uh, in your final batter. So we've mixed it, it's looking great. My hands are looking disgusting. Now, I'm gonna cover it and then we're gonna set it aside and it's going to probably need about 10 minutes, maybe 10 to 15, depends on the temperature of your room, the temperature of your water or milk when you put it in there. Um, so you're just gonna let this kind of sit uh, and it's gonna start to bubble and you'll see it start to almost rise a little bit. If you are concerned that you won't be able to know when it's done, then you can put a little bit of the flour that's for your recipe and you can sprinkle it on top and then as it rises, it will visibly crack and so you can see that it is ready um, and no harm will be had because it's the same flour that would be going into your whole thing anyways. Our next step in this bread is to chop our herbs and then brown our butter and then bloom all of that herbiness, herbaceousness, if I must, I feel like I must, bloom all of that herb flavor into our brown butter, which will ultimately flavor the whole roll. Let's start with our sage. We've chosen woody herbs and all that means is like, you know, like herbs that have like a thick stem. That's what we've chosen because that, they actually release their flavors more intensely in heat. All right, now sage, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're gonna stack it all up kind of like basil. Now we're gonna kind of roll it. It's not gonna really wanna roll because this is, it's a lot that I've tried to shove into this one little thing. Could I do it in multiple things? Yes, but I'm not going to. So, and now we're just gonna take and we're gonna chop fine little slivers. This is called chiffonade. Okay, we don't actually want little strings of herbs in our bread, so we're gonna chop the other direction and make them, you know, more like a mince or like a fine kind of fine mince. Okay, so in my pot here, I have butter that has been melted. Now, this is like a pressed, a pressed tablespoon, okay? It's compressed. You want all that herbaceousness. I don't even know if you're, like I'm using that right, it's fine. All right, she's in the pot. Rosemary is next. This is my favorite herb. All right, same concept, woody stem, so just kind of run. You know, that one we picked off, but this, you know, you're gonna kind of just run your fingers down and then like the small top bit that's really soft, you can just pinch off. I'm not gonna belabor this point because 
I hope you've watched all of my other videos and you've seen me do this like a bajillion times. So we want about twice as much rosemary as sage. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want. This is your bread, you don't like rosemary, just omit it. Use more sage. You could use 100% sage here. There are no rules when it comes to this. Just like get some herbs, your favorite varietals. If you grew them yourself, I'm super, I'm jealous. Now we're just gonna gather. It's not that serious, right? I'm gonna try and gather it into like a little line and get all the little needles pointing in one direction, but if they're not, then they're not. And I'm not going to stress about it. Okay, and then we're just gonna gather and repeat. Again, we don't want huge shards of rosemary just to like all up in one bite. You know, you want like a little rosemary and a little sage and a little just like, I shouldn't say quoi in each bite, right? Okay, we've done it, right there. It's about two tablespoons, feeling great about it. And I'm gonna put that in my pot. Now, the only thing that's left is thyme <laughs> of the herb variety. So while this one's a little bit more delicate, it is still a woody herb, so you know, we're just gonna kind of pick it off. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon. It's not that serious. If you get a stem in there, don't stress about it. You can, for certain, Put, pull that out later. And that's it. I made it seem super long-winded and whatever, but I'm just gonna give that a nice little swirl. And then I'm gonna pop this on my stove top uh, and I'm gonna brown it. So I'm gonna put it over kind of medium, medium low heat. You know, you don't wanna burn it right off the gate. You know, you wanna give that, those herbs time to bloom and just develop in flavor and just, oh man, the golden years in here. And then once that browning starts to happen, we're gonna pour it into a bowl because it needs to cool just a bit before we put it into our, our mix. We don't want to warm up our dough excessively. We also don't wanna pour it straight on our yeast and kill them um, or you know, hurt them in any way. So we're just gonna, we're gonna man our pot, cool it down, and then we'll mix the rest. All right, so you can probably hear it uh, it's definitely bubbling and, and it's getting all excited in there. It's not starting to brown yet. You know, there's still a lot of moisture that's kind of bubbling off before those bits will kind of stick to the bottom and brown. You can, well, you can't smell, but I can smell all the beautiful herbs that are releasing their flavors. And we're just gonna, so we're just gonna let this keep going. I'm gonna give it a stir every now and again, make sure that, you know, one part's not browning excessively. We want to make sure that it's a nice, even brown. And the only way to do that is to give it a stir. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it out. I'll show you what I have in my pot in just a moment. Um, you know, we're not getting the brownest butter ever, but we've got some real nice um, deep brown bits, but we don't wanna burn our herbs, okay? Nobody wants uh, a burnt rosemary in there, in their bread. What they do want is a nice, bloomed, beautiful rosemary, and then like, the nuttiness of the brown butter, right? So that's what we've got here. So we're just gonna let this cool just a bit. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge, um, and then we're gonna go from there. Do you see what has happened with our sponge here? She has risen, <laughs> and she is looking super proud. And so we're just gonna go ahead and put everything else in our stand mixer uh, while we wait for her, our butter. It'll be ready when it's ready. So I've got more bread flour. Again, we want that gluten. Uh, very important, got an egg. So I'm gonna put that over here and then I'm gonna keep my sugar and my salt away from it because the, the sugar and the salt will actually kind of pull that moisture from the egg and it can also denature the protein. So that's when you get those really hard bits um, that don't actually come out ever. Um, and we don't want that. We want just a really wonderful and enriched bread. So you can also like build a little wall. And then I've got brown sugar, dark brown sugar, and pumpkin, the star of the show. I mean, I don't know if, maybe the herbs are the star, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it's a generous amount of pumpkin. You want that pumpkin flavor and that color. And then we are gonna put our sponge on top, the whole shebang, all of it, yep. And take all of this beautiful thing. Do you see how it almost looks like, um, you know, sourdough starter? Uh, it's a little less glutinous than sourdough starter because obviously it's been sitting here for 10 minutes and not overnight. So we're just gonna just kind of plop that in there. All right, it's in. 
I'm gonna save my spatula uh, because we're just gonna, that's just gonna chill and sit there while we wait on our butter to be an appropriate temperature. An appropriate temperature is like body temperature. Um, if you wanna chill it all the way down, you can totally do that. Uh, if you wanna do it ahead of time, also cool. Okay, now our butter has cooled. It is still a bit warm, but I'm not stressed about that. And as you can see, kinda, it kinda thickened a little bit. It's gonna be great. We're gonna pop it in here. All right. So in my stand mixer, I've got all the things. And we haven't forgotten anything because we put it in ahead of time, so we just knew that it was there. And I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate and mix this with the paddle. I like mixing with the paddle in small, small quantities because that will distribute the ingredients easier and this is not very effective. So we're just gonna go ahead and give this a nice mix. I'm actually gonna scrape this down, which I know is a little weird, but um, everything is kind of decided to just stay in place. Just kind of get some of that stuff in the bottom. I just got some flour that's down at the bottom. It's kind of settled down there and that's not its final resting place. So I'm just gonna keep mixing until it is all incorporated in one dough. We've got ourselves a nice chunky dough. Do you see how beautifully orange this is? It's already developing a nice bit of gluten. We can thank our sponge for that and our bread flour. Now we're gonna switch to the dough hook. We're gonna pop this in and we're gonna turn on about two, like two, <laughs> we're gonna turn on medium. Um, the idea is that this is not going to form a beautiful, cohesive, smooth, silky dough in the mixer. We are gonna finish developing it by a series of folds. Um, and that's because the, the pumpkin is not helping, the butter is not helping, um, and we just, we want to develop that gluten without heating it up excessively. So we'll mix it in here until it kind of folds together. It kind of pulls away from the sides a bit, but still looks a bit straggly, um, and then we'll turn it out. Meanwhile, I've got myself a large bowl, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of canola oil in there. You can just you can use spray if you like. Oh, she's looking great in there, guys for extra time with the sponge has really helped. So it's already kind of pulled away. Um, it's kind of gotten tight in the center. Um, and we're feeling great about that. I, it's not done yet. It's not ready to come out. I just want to give it a little, it's almost like a stir, right? I'm just, I take the, the dough hook and I scrape it down on the bottom and then I kind of flip the bottom onto the top. And that's because the gluten structure on the top is getting worked more than the gluten structure on the bottom because of the way the flour is sitting and that the dough hook doesn't actually reach all the way down. Um, so. Ah! She's looking great. Absolutely epically good in here. Um, and I'm really proud of the development that's happening here. All right, it is still scraggly on the outside. It is looking really nice though. All right, we're still gonna do one, one series of folds just to finish off the gluten development. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off the dough hook. Make sure you get all of that deliciousness. Now we're gonna take our dough and put it into our oil bowl. And we're not gonna stress about how it looks in the bowl. It is not a beauty contest. It does not need to be in a perfect little circle. It doesn't need to be any sort of thing like that. So we have just, plopped it in without any sort of flourish. And I'm gonna cover this up. We're gonna let this prove 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna do a series of folds. All right, it's been about 25 minutes, but it is pretty warm in here. So I, you know, I'm not like trying to get her to do her bulk proof right now. I'm trying to get, you know, to relax the gluten a little bit so that we can do our series of folds. So you're gonna basically start with one side, Give it a stretch and flop it down on the other. Same thing on the other side. Turn it about 45, do a quarter turn, and then, and then flip it over. You see how it's kind of tearing a little bit? Um, how it's not nice and smooth, uh, which means that I would like to do one more series of folds. 
So I'm gonna let it proof about another 20, basically kind of rest, let that gluten relax, and then I'm gonna give it one more series of folds just to make sure it has the structure it needs to hold all of this goodness um, once we shape it and proof it and bake it in the rolls. So 20 more minutes, and then we'll do another thing. We'll do that one more time. All right. Now, it has been about 15 minutes, and she's obviously rising, which isn't necessarily the point at this moment. We're trying to develop that gluten, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her a flip over, and we're gonna do our final series of folds. So I'm gonna grab her, give her a yank, flip it over on herself, turn her or the bowl. Same thing on the other side. You see how it's you know kind of holding itself up a little bit more. It's, you know, that's that gluten, that's that structure that we want. Uh, and that's great. So she's where we want her. Oof. Yes, girl, look at you. And then we're gonna flip her over. It doesn't have to be flipped over. And now we're gonna bulk proof. So we are going to allow it to proof in bulk. So all together, right? In about 30, whenever it's tripled, then we will come back, we'll divide and shape and final proof. All right, so our bread has obviously tripled. It's very warm in here, so I went ahead and I put her in the fridge uh, just to slow down that growth. We are gonna go ahead and just kind of pull this out. All right, do so you see how beautiful that is? We're not gonna need any sort of bench flour. It's a gorgeous dough. And we are gonna divide this into 12 pieces. So you can eyeball that, or you can go ahead and use a scale, uh, which is what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna be about like 86 grams each. Um, it's hard to tell how much of the butter evaporated or not, so you know you're you're just gonna have to kind of see. All right, so now we're gonna shape. So for rolls, I just kind of take all the sides, I fold them in, and then I flip over that inside bit, and then I'm rolling and I'm kind of moving this this way and my thumb this way. So I am kind of tightening it under itself while rolling it on the uh, the counter. Now this, you know, you kind of have to do it to a point where you want it to stand up and hold its shape. You want it to be smooth on top and then also not see all the things inside. Um, if it starts to crack on the top, then you've, you've rolled it too much and you should just kind of let her be. Um, she's done. So that's what she's telling you. <laughs> so go ahead and just kind of repeat with the rest of your dough, folding it in, oops, flipping it over and rolling it. And then I've got this, you know, nine by 11 bake dish here, and I'm just kind of putting them obviously three by four, as one would expect. In they go. We are gonna cover this in plastic wrap and allow this to proof until it's doubled. Now, this is a deep dish, so it's not gonna come all the way up. Uh, we do just want it kind of to be doubled, so that way you get that oven spraying and the yeast still have plenty of energy and they're ready when they hit the oven and they just have that final burst of party. So covering, letting sit in my room, it's probably gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes. In a normal room, probably 35 to 40. Um, so we'll just, we'll check back in. All right, so our rolls have ferociously risen. They are definitely double in size. Um, it, it, it took about 25 minutes um, but you know, this is obviously, it's a very warm room, so it could take her, take closer to 30 to 45, depending on the temperature of your room. I'm going to hit these with a, just a little bit of egg wash. You want to watch my video on egg wash up there. It's a quick quickie. Um, but you do want your egg wash to be nice and loose when you're brushing the, um, the rolls. You don't want it to kind of like hit the sides or conge like, you know, stick anywhere. So the, um, the egg wash will just give it a nice kind of shiny top. Uh, we're gonna brush it with butter as well, but you know, it just, this way it just, it's gonna look beautiful at every stage of its life, which I think we all deserve that, don't you? Okay, all right, so we have egg washed our rolls. Our oven is preheated to 350 degrees convection or 375 rags. Um, we're gonna pop these in, they're gonna rise, they're gonna bake beautifully. It's probably gonna take about 22 to 25 minutes. Um, you can use a cake tester uh, until it comes out clean because otherwise if there's any sort of dough on there, they are not baked. Uh, you wanna poke the center um, or you can insert an instant read thermometer uh, and it reads 185. So 
In they go. And we're out. Look at these beautiful rolls. They are stunning. Um, and you know, they're gorgeous as they are, but of course we are gonna just brush them with a bit of uh, melted butter while they're still hot and then sprinkle them with a little fleur de sel. And oh, look at that. It's gonna make it extra shiny. You know, obviously the, um, the egg wash that we put on there earlier is also going to make it shiny. And that will just kind of solidify this, the magic that is happening here. They baked about 25 minutes. So in case you were wondering, and then we're just gonna give them a little sprinkle of a fleur de sel. They're so pretty. All right, so the final step here is, um, other than tasting, is to let them cool a bit. I don't know how my willpower is doing today. I'm just gonna check in with it. It's not doing well. So I'm gonna let them cool like a hot minute and then we're gonna eat one. It's time to try. <laughs> is this best practice? No, but if you haven't reached in and grabbed a warm roll, darn near fresh from the oven, then ha you haven't lived. And today we are living. So I am gonna try not to burn my hand and I'm just gonna, just gonna, just gonna get one here. Oh, do you see this magical inside? It is steaming hot, but gorgeous. It is like beautifully risen and like it broke apart perfectly from its neighbors. And you can see all of the herbs that are studded throughout. Guys. Um, without further ado, and because I have no patience, it's time to try. Ready? What? Mmm. Mmm. You get like that savory pumpkin note, and then all of those beautiful herbs come rushing through. I mean, it's just soft and like a little bit buttery, but not aggressively so. Just in the, the texture, it's like tender and moist and just like melts in your mouth and it's just all savory oh my gosh i just like want to 